By seeing London, I have seen as much of life as the world can show, said Samuel Johnson in the 18th century. The city of London was indeed the center of the arts, trade, and culture, but it also teemed with squalor, misery, and disease. Half the babies born died before their fifth birthday, and those who survived were often middle-aged before they were 30. Thousands died in the periodic outbursts of plague, typhus, and cholera. Today, of course, the situation has changed, and the cleanliness of the new architecture is just one symptom of a more healthy age. And the Corporation of London now administers one of the most important public health authorities in the world, which extends along a hundred miles of London's river and docks. Every year, 50,000 ships pass through the port, bringing with them five and a half million tons of food of every kind, and over 125,000 passengers, many of them alien and Commonwealth immigrants. The entry of dangerous disease is prevented only by the unceasing efforts of the Port of London Health Authority, headed at Guildhall by Dr. Swamp, the Medical Officer of Health of the Port and City. His jurisdiction extends from 25 miles to seaward of the Nor Lightship, right up to Teddington, and includes all five dock groups. His staff consists of six medical officers who board ships coming into the river and also carry out examination of immigrants. And then there are 20 port health inspectors to do work in all the docks as well as on the river. The scope of their work is very wide. For instance, in this meat store at one of the docks, there is a meat inspection room where sampling is supervised by Mr. Good, a supervisory port health inspector. I'm the senior inspector responsible for the examination of imported meats. In the case of examination for disease, the meat is first thawed to produce its original condition, and then a detailed examination is made in the same manner as it would have been examined in the country of origin immediately after slaughter. We are looking for lesions of disease that can be found either by palpation or incision or by visual evidence. We cannot possibly detain all meat, so we must necessarily concentrate on those particular countries and those types of meat where we have previously found trouble. As the meat is coming off the ship, we are looking for the official certificate, which is placed on the meat in the country of origin, which says that it has been inspected post-mortem and anti-mortem and has been prepared under hygienic conditions in the country of origin. Without this certificate, meat cannot be brought into the country. The man who supervises and coordinates the work of all the inspectors is Mr. Mackey, the chief port health inspector. He's an ex-naval architect and normally operates from Guildhall, but when a special problem arises, likes to go and see for himself. I keep myself acquainted. I don't pull any wool on me eyes. You see, I was in the field before I sat on that chair in all the districts. The importer may stand to make a very serious financial loss if his meat is condemned. And if the case is likely to lead to a prosecution, the chief inspector will first want to see for himself the condition of the samples. Apart from his thorough knowledge of the job, it's important that he's able to deal with people from all walks of life. And it's not taught in the textbooks. It's taught of experience. I've worked since I was eight years of age in the humblest little job for six months for me mother and that sort of thing. I've been on the lower deck and I've been on the upper deck in the Navy. And with all that, one does get a second sense of how to get the best out of men without watching them all the time. We use sterilized choppers in rotation, sterilizing them between each cut. While meat inspection uses meat which is thawed, uh, bacteriological sampling must be done with frozen meat. Pieces are cut from blocks of frozen meat and uh, taken to the laboratory for detailed inspection. We use new plastic containers for the samples. These are placed in a second plastic bag to prevent cross-contamination. The meat is not at any time handled samples are drawn individually from the block of meat without being passed onto any other surface. 
At the Central Food Hygiene Laboratory, Collindale, the samples are individually tested under sterile conditions for the presence of food poisoning organisms. jars are incubated in a warm room for a day or so and then a small loopful of liquid from each jar is painted onto a broth medium in culture dishes. After further incubation the resulting cultures are examined and tests made to distinguish the dangerous bacteria, especially the salmonella organisms. The principal port health inspector, Mr. Marshall, is responsible for the Upper River District. His territory extends from Erith up to Teddington, a distance of 30-odd miles. He is concerned with all the shipping in that section of the river. The refuse wharves and refuse lighters, the water boats and the houseboats, of which there are nearly 180 in the port. To the houseboats, he acts as a local health inspector keeping an eye open for conditions which may be prejudicial to health. A houseboat requires a great deal of maintenance to keep out the water and the weather. Refuse disposal and water supply for ships in the river are controlled by the Port Health Authority. So is the hygiene of cruise quarters, storerooms and galleys. In the West India dock, the supervisory Port Health Inspector is Mr. Drink. His work includes the inspection and sampling of a variety of foodstuffs. This particular dock gets them from all around the world, which takes in your meat, your canned foods, and your fresh fruits. We have shrimps, prawns, mussels, crab. We have tomatoes from the Canary Islands, bananas from the West Indies, potatoes, onions, beetroots, citrus fruits of every kind from the Mediterranean. I bet, uh, Toasted cockroaches, sugar dance. This sounds impossible. They've had grilled grasshoppers. In this country, we have laws that preservatives of certain kinds are not allowed. And then you have goods that are coloring matters in to make them look nice, which are not allowed. You have an instinct after a few years. My golly, I don't like the looks of that. I'm sending that to the analyst. About 3,000 food samples a year are submitted to the public analyst from the Port of London. Each different type of sample requires a different method of analysis, and a detailed report on each is returned to the Port Health Authority. Most foods are allowed to contain preservatives now, but the kinds of preservatives and the quantities used are restricted to those that are considered absolutely safe. In the last year alone, tumour-inducing dyes were identified in 21 different samples from the port. The laboratory techniques of Dr. Amphlett Williams are very sophisticated, but he's able to rely on his own senses to tell him much of what he needs to know about the large quantities of teas he receives from the port. They vary considerably in taste, some being fragrant, fruity, aromatic, or even musty or earthy. Any unusual taste or smell may indicate foreign substances which need to be further investigated. You examine, you take canned food, if it's burst, it's been blown, the gas is inside through unfit goods, it's made gas and blown these tins up so you know that that's readily recognized. Then there's some burst with the blowing already, then there's leaking through damage or bad seams, and sometimes the gauge of the tin is not strong enough to carry in the storage coming across. Well, then I send a, a destruction notice to the importer, giving him every opportunity to come down and discuss the position. I did have two importers with me telling them that his hams were good, and one exploded and drenched them with the most foul smell of uh, juice not out of his ham. 
but they would try to impress you that they were good and even brought knives and forks to open one to eat it. When you got uh, around about 300,000 pound condemning, uh, naturally I don't blame anybody for fighting, but uh, I just can't. I don't wish to know the costs of these things or anything. All I want to do is to see that it's fit food that enters this country, sound fit food. Nearly three quarters of a million tonnes a year of London's household refuse is carried by river. If it were allowed to, this could easily aggravate the problem of river pollution. But the City of London's own refuse wharf at Walbrook is a model of cleanliness and efficiency. The Port of London Health Authority has made bylaws to ensure that the lighters are all properly sheeted and that as little rubbish as possible is allowed to fall into the water. The 7,000 Thames lighters in service provide another potential problem for the Port Health Authority, rats. They must be kept under strict surveillance throughout the port. When necessary, a vessel is de-ratted under the supervision of the Port Health Authority's technical assistants, either by gassing or by direct poisoning. All ships using the port are required by law to possess a de-ratting certificate, which must be revised every six months. And the main problem when de-ratting becomes necessary is often the need to detain the ship long enough for the operation to be properly and safely carried out. The purpose of trapping rats is to obtain a specimen from the overall rat population in the Port of London. They are taken from the docks, the river districts and from the warehouses to provide a fair sample. In this way information is gained about the current state of this potential source of disease. Particularly it is an insurance against plague and although the last plague rat found in the port was around about 1926 Laboratory tests are still carried out as a matter of routine at the Collindale Laboratory. Plague would be indicated in the rat by enlargement of the lymph glands or buboes, mottling of the liver, congestion or abscesses of the spleen. The actual plague bacilli would be found in the blood, the buboes and particularly the spleen. Every week we sample the water supplies to see that the water supplied to ships, to the offices, within the docks is of pure quality. We inspect the mills, the offices, their sanitation. We inspect every part of the living accommodation on every vessel that enters the dock. It is a very, very great advantage in this work to have been a seafarer yourself. It creates this fellowship of the sea. Being a seafarer yourself. It creates this fellowship of the sea so that when I go on board a ship, I find it comparatively easy to get things done simply through having this common bond. The quarantine service of the Port Health Authority is established at Gravesend. In charge of it is the senior boarding medical officer, Dr. Chapman, who administers a 24-hour watch on ships coming into the river. The ships most likely to be bringing disease with them are those from what are termed infected areas, all African, Middle Eastern, Asian and Central and South American ports. These all have to be boarded by the medical officer, who is also available to any other ship which has sickness aboard. Sometimes <laughs> we have to ask the ships to slow down. Our maximum speed is 12 and a half knots. But I should say on an average we do it between 8 and 10 knots. Uh, if you do it any faster, you get too much wash between the ships. And I often have a wet jacket, sometimes twice or three times in a day. 
you know, particularly when there's been wind against tide. And um, you just get on the ladder and a wave goes right over you. And, of course, the most of our boarding, I should say, is done after the hours of darkness. Uh, having boarded the ship, we look at the Declaration of Health form and a list of dates of vaccination of crews or passenger. Uh, I'd, uh, immediately, if a ship from Far East with a native crew, I'd ask for a muster. I'd look at all the men carefully. Yes, please come quick, quick, this side. Please. All engine crew, this side. Right. Come, come. Let's call out the name. And the end of the list, I'll have to see you later. Because, um, yes. well, we'll hold the ship up. Right? You want me to call their names? Call the names, they come oh. past me, you see. Hey, dear little Selma. All right? Yes, second cook. All right, second cook. Yes, See your hand, please. Then the other one. All right. And then, if quite by accident the master hadn't told me there was a sick case on board, yes. I would say that I would like to see the sick man. Uh, he may be in the uh, ship's hospital or he may be in his cabin. Usually he would be in his own quarters. The light isn't good. Ship's lighting is never the best, as you know. And um, language difficulties, but because one does get used to uh, looking at patients in the half light. But if there's any doubt, of course, we would um, treat it as a suspect until um, proved otherwise. Any man with a temperature aboard a ship, whether he's got a rash or otherwise, we regard until we've made a um, diagnosis or been kept under observation as suspect. So it would, might mean taking a man off just for the temperature and no rash or no other symptoms. And if it were the worst, that is a smallpox or suspect smallpox, the master would be ordered to anchor his ship in Harm Bight, which is a part of the Gravesend Reach. We would make arrangements to take the sick man off with his bedding and clothing. His quarters would be sealed off and um, fumigated and then the whole of the uh, ship's company would be revaccinated. Right, why don't you stay with him, please, will you? Chicken pot, we always regard the suspect from the Far East. We go into it very thoroughly to uh, ensure that it is chicken pox we're dealing with uh, and not uh, modified smallpox. So that would mean getting a second opinion down. And then after having carried out the necessary um, Cautions, the ship will be allowed to proceed. We have no power to stop the ship longer than is necessary to do what is required for um, invention or uh, infection. But in addition to the cargo vessels and freighters, at frequent intervals come the really large liners, bringing with them yet another problem for the Port Health Authority doctors. The Deputy Medical Officer of Health for the Port and City of London is Dr. Jones. One of my duties as it is of every other senior medical officer of the Corporation of London, is to act as what is called a medical inspector of aliens and Commonwealth immigrants. There is a regulation which says, in effect, that anyone coming into this country must be capable of supporting himself and his family, and he must not be likely to become a charge upon the exchequer. And it's our job to examine any alien immigrant or any Commonwealth immigrant who, in the opinion of the immigration officer, may come into this category. It goes very hard for a doctor, no matter how strongly he feels on the subject of keeping infected immigrants out of the country, to tell a peasant who has saved up all his life to come over and work in this country that he's not going to be permitted to land because he has some disease or another. This man has to go home, his life savings are gone, and he has to start again from square one. I spent some time working in the smallpox hospital in India because clinical experience is far better than any amount of book learning on the subject. As a result of this, I'm able to help the boarding medical officers and to give them an opinion as to whether or not I think that a given case is smallpox or something else. I'm being called in as another doctor, nothing more than that, 
another doctor to give a second opinion as a help and not as a directive. This man has no prodromal symptoms. No, I agree. And he has a very good vaccination history. So in view of this and the other factors, I have no doubt at all. But I'm, I'm quite happy myself, but I thought I ought to get you to see the case, because it's a, a little atypical. He uh, has a, an atypical chicken pox, in fact. Well, I reckon we've earned a cup of tea at least. Thank you very much. London is one of the biggest and busiest international ports in the world. It handles a great proportion of the imports of food for the whole country. Hundreds of merchant and passenger vessels are constantly entering and leaving. Thousands of visitors, immigrants, crews of ships, passengers in transit come ashore every day of the year. In the past, the far-seeing eyes of the city fathers saw that good hygiene and health were inseparable from London's commerce and the well-being of its people. Over the years, a system of positive safeguards has been built up and is operated by men who have themselves great experience of the sea. They succeed because they're able to do a difficult and often unpopular job with tact and firmness. Today, the City of London Corporation controls a port health authority which is unsurpassed for its scope, effectiveness and its humanity. A 24-hour-a-day, all through the year, guard against dirt, disease, contaminated foodstuffs. A system of safeguards to health and hygiene, not only for London, but for the whole nation.